Hey comic book fans, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0 in the car. That's right guys, today uh, Mike Spider Slayer's comic book haul is live. Um, just because of lack of time, right? I didn't have time to film or edit or any of that type of stuff. So honestly, uh, I decided to do this video live. This is episode 363, and this is the video series where each and every week, guys, I show you, what's up, Legend Storm, um, what I picked up at the comic book store. That's right, guys. Um, so I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch and watching this uh, comic book haul live. It's something that I don't normally do, so uh, I still wind up doing it in the car. But again, it's a spur of the moment thing. I had to do a lot of tennis teaching this morning. Uh, Tom Tom says, uh, excited to see what you got. So I'm glad you're here. Got four people watching. If you like this video, guys, give it a thumbs up. Lyric Magic Moments, what's up? He says, hi, welcome. Um, yeah, so this is awesome. So uh, here is the mysterious black bag this week, guys. Um, did you guys go to the comic book store yet this week? Um, I was a little later than usual. I was actually... There was a strong possibility that um, I wasn't going to go to the comic book store today because of all the all the teaching that I had to do. I was like, man, where am I going to fit time to go to the comic book store? But it did end early. So, again, uh, I got lucky. was fortunate. Grabbed some lunch. Went to the comic book store. Got my books. And now I'm going to share with you guys all the comic books that I picked up at the store. So, without further ado, guys... Uh, I guess we're just going to go get started and wait for the other viewers to come on. Hopefully you guys got to check my other videos this week, which was the most anticipated comics, uh, top 10 covers of the week. And I am making a little bit of a format change when it comes to the top 10 comic books of the week. Um, I'm actually changing it to the top five comic books of the week. And also giving a worst pick and an honorable mention book so the video is not as long and it's not such a beast to actually edit, okay? So there's going to be a little bit of a change on that and so maybe more people will actually watch it because not everyone wants to watch a 30-minute video. So I'm trying to cut it down a bit. All right, so here we go. Comics, Mysterious Black Bag. This is what we're getting. Let's take it out. Here is the stock, everybody. This is it right here. So, the bag goes on the floor, and we got the advertisement for, look what's coming up, free comic book day. That's right, guys. Um, yeah. So, who's excited about free comic book day right around the corner? Mine says, two free comics per person. Uh, so, you spend $10, and then you get free five uh, free comics, and if you spend 20 you get 10 free comics. So basically you spend 20 bucks, you get 10 free comics plus two free ones. So you get 12 free comics and you can own a mystery box for $15.99. Uh, Lyric Magic Moment says nice stock stack. You got loads. It, it looks a little more than what it should because look, you got bags and boards there, right? So it's kind of deceiving there. All right, so first things first, bags and boards, they cost $5.99 for a stack of like 25 of them or something like that. I don't know, but I buy them literally every week. All right, so here are the books that I picked up for the week. So first one is Marvelous X-Men issue two. It's got Apocalypse on there. This is a utopia where love is not actually allowed in this world. And uh, so who's gonna be the, who's gonna solve this problem? Who is going to get um, the X-Men back into the normal world until we get normal X-Men books again. I don't know. Is it going to be Apocalypse? Is he actually going to be a good guy? Uh, so here's the interior artwork here. So we get to see that inside. Um, I don't know. It's all right. Marvelous X-Men is an okay series. Look at that though. That's Laura. <laughs> she looks kind of funny there. So I don't know. We'll see. But Marvelous X-Men issue two. Next, Spider-Man book. You guys hopefully read 16.HU. Wonderful book. This is the Amazing Spider-Man issue 17. 
as it kicks off the whole hunted storyline. So I'm really looking forward to this one as well. Um, here we got, it looks like her, is it Herberto Ramos that does the artwork in this one? Yeah, it is. Looks a little different. The inking's a little different. So here's Herberto Ramos. We've seen this type of style from Craven before, you know, from uh, when Craven's last hunt was going on. This looks very familiar tone there. So we get to see naked Craven. So that's quite interesting. And then here we get to see Felicia as she was in the last issue. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to this whole story and seeing what's going to happen here uh, with the hunted storyline. So that's amazing. Spider-Man issue 17. All right, next we have Avengers No Road Home. This is issue five. Quite interesting cover here as we get to see Immortal Hulk. And is that Nyx? Is that her? I'm not sure who that who that actually is, that goddess of night. Uh, but yeah, here is the actual opening page to that book as she has the Voyage captured, a Voyager captured. And um, I thought the last issue was really great dealing with Nyx's character, uh, learning about her origin story and whatnot. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, uh, Lyric Magic Moment says the uh, Avengers book is really heating up. And I agree. I think it's great. This weekly series has been phenomenal. And I think Jim Zub and Al Ewing and, and Mark Wade should team up all again all all the time and do an Avengers book because look at this this is really looking good so I can't wait to see what happens going forward with Avengers No Road Home this is issue five guys all right guys anytime you want to make a comment during the video please feel free to do so I'll shout you out I'll say your comments out there give this video a thumbs up if you like it uh, next we're going to be talking about Boom Studios. This is Buffy. This is issue three. Um, really love the first two issues of this series as it introduced to our different types of characters. I think the artwork is absolutely phenomenal in this book as well. Uh, we get to see a lot of our characters look, characters look like they did in the actual TV show if you ever watched the uh, Buffy the Vampire show. Um, and um, I, It's a little bit different take on the book. But nevertheless, it's a good uh, jumping on point for readers as well. If you maybe you've never read or watched uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer also. So here we go. So that's it right there. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, issue three from Boom. Boom Studios. That's right. Next, if there is a Wolverine book, guys, that you should read, it's Dead Man Logan. This is issue five. Uh, of 12 so this is going on like all year um, and uh, but it's really good as this has to do with Miss Sinister and Sin and uh, they tried to use Mysterio to uh, destroy the Avengers that failed they were going to betray Mysterio Mysterio caught on wants to join the good guys and uh, they went to infiltrate their base and they're going against this Neo Hydra uh, type of characters and whatnot. What's going to happen in this issue? Who knows? Is Mysterio going to die? Is he going to retire or whatnot? But this book has got great humor. And when Hawkeye and Logan team up together, dude, it's hysterical. It's so good. It's a lot of fun, guys. I definitely recommend you checking out old, uh, Dead Man Logan issue 5. Again, pretty much a year-long event here. All right, let's move forward. Let's go to a new number one this week, and this is The Magnificent Ms. Marvel, issue one. Uh, Saladin Ahmed is doing this series. He does Miles Morales Spider-Man, which I'm not really fond of right now. Uh, don't know the artist's name. I can't say it right. Min Minko Jong? Sorry if I mispronounced that. Uh, but here's some of the interior artwork of what you can expect while looking at Ms. Marvel. And it actually looks really good. Um, where the story goes, how Carmella actually grows as a character is still in question. This book does need to be solid. Otherwise, I have a feeling people are going to lose interest in it. Uh, check out this advertisement for Symbiote Spider-Man issue one. It's got Mysterio in there as well. So I'm looking forward to that coming out. It's written by Peter David, too. So, yeah, it looks like it has a very similar tone when it comes to, uh, you know, the last series. But if you guys are interested in Miss Marvel, it's come out today. So go check it out. Issue one. All right. Next, we have Murder Falcon issue six. 
Um, this goes to issue eight. I got word from this from one of my, my viewers, so I appreciate that. And guys, thank you so much for watching uh, right now. It really means a lot. And uh, yeah, so we have the continuation of this. Jake is the main character. He's teaming up with another band member to take on these crazy ass bad guys. This book is awesome, man. It kind of plays tribute to like maybe the early 90s or late 80s heavy metal music. There's these crazy like, <laughs> these like, I don't know, what do you call it? Caverns where these mythological type of music instruments are at. There's these entities uh, that come out from the, when the band members play their instruments as well. It's really way out there. And, uh, but there is emotional moments in this book too, uh, which makes it a lot of fun. So here's some more of this artwork. The one thing I have about this though, is the dialogue in the word bubbles is so tiny. Dude, I, mean, I can't freaking, can't see this shit. So, uh, but nevertheless, it's a good book. I definitely suggest you guys check it out. Am I not focusing on there? Let me know if you guys can see me. All right. I think that's better. All right. Uh, Lyric Magic Moment says, always good to get some independent books, really great stories and art. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Guys support independence, right? This is going to be a make or break it for me, guys. Old Man Quill. This is issue three. Um, I don't know. Like I said this in my most anticipated. How many characters can we have that deal with the wastelands, right? Before it starts getting old. And this one has nothing to do with Logan or Hawkeye. So it's just Peter Quill. He's doing this battle against, um, like, uh, Do uh, Doomsday. What's his name? Dr. Doom uh, in the book. I feel like the artwork is also not polished like some of the other series. The uh, colors are not as bright or as vibrant and as detailed. I feel like it, it's rushed in many ways. So if this issue doesn't pick up, this could be the end of Peter Quill, uh, Old Man Quill. Now, I know Tony Stark Iron Man came out today. Didn't pick that up. I've officially dropped that as I feel like there's been no depth in that book and no story progression in that book. So maybe when Don, Dan Slott's done with it, I will pick it up once again. All right, next. Issue four, Spawn Kills everyone too this is the conclusion as he's facing clownos um that's pretty cool and look at the the type of cover right it plays tribute to the amazing spider-man cover um if you guys remember that when venom is doing battle against spider-man and spider-man's on the back same color scheme there so that's pretty cool that todd mcfarlane does this here's some of the interior artwork in here as Clownos and Spawn and, and his little Spawn babies uh, looks like they do battle against him and whatnot. So <laughs> this book is very uh, gory and it's cool to see different types of heroes and villains get destroyed. How creative can Todd McFarlane get by killing off all of the comic book universe, which I think is kind of fun. So this is Spawn Kills Everyone. This is issue four, the conclusion to this. If you want to pick this up and you haven't read issues one through three, I would definitely check it out and trade. All right. Next, issue five of this was really good. This is um, Spider-Gwen Ghost Spider. This is issue six. This one has to do with John Jonah Jameson, uh, J. Jonah's son, and he's Manwolf. And we get to see the shadow of that as Gwen is looking at Manwolf, but you don't see him, right? You just see the shadow. Um, really has to deal with Gwen Stacy about her being responsible as Gwen and trying to find herself as a person, as a human. I mean, I'm sorry, as a human, as a hero, she's found herself here. Uh, not so much. So she has to find that crazy balance. Uh, artwork, I think, may have taken a change in this particular issue. Maybe not. I don't know. It looks all right. What do you guys think? You know, do you guys read uh, Spider Gwen? Do you think this is a uh, book that we must have out there right now? Again, leave those comments down below, guys, and let me know what you think. Um, so, yeah, this is the way the artwork looks. And so hopefully this is a solid story. So this is issue six. Really getting into the uh, kicking off of the new story arc. All right. Another new number one. Longtime fan. I'm hoping it's going to be solid. This is Transformers. This is issue one uh, of the series. Uh, it's kind of a new jumping on point. It's got a new writer. I uh, got some new artists on here. And uh, we'll get to see 
uh, Rubble, Bumblebee, Windblade, um, Orion Pax, which is Optimus Prime, Megatron, and Ironhide. So those are your first main characters. Here's some of the art right here. And uh, Doomsday Comics says, love that cover, old school style. So I'm thinking he's talking about Transformers. So the interior artwork looks the same in here too. Kind of looks like old school Transformers as well. My biggest issue about Transformers overall from the last series was the world and all the history that happened in the comic books. I felt like it was so overwhelming, so dialogue heavy. You just got lost in the world and you can never pick it up. So I'm hoping for readers that this is a new one uh, for readers to actually uh, read. I picked up a mini series of Star Trek vs. Transformers. It was pretty cool. So that's cool. I never read that series because I'm not a huge Star Trek fan. So here's some more of this interior artwork. Never got into reading the Transformers books. Yeah, I agree. I tried every single time. But maybe this might be a good one for you guys. Again, it looks very much like the cartoon here. So we'll see what happens with it. So Transformers issue one. Doomsday Comics says he loves the art. And Brevin Kimball says, hi, Spider Slayer. He's waving. So I'm waving back. Uh, again, guys, thanks for watching. A lot of fun doing this video live. All right, next is the Uncanny X-Men um, <coughs> issue one, Winter's End. I don't know why I bought this. I don't remember putting it on my pull list. I have no idea. I don't even know what it's about. Um, looks like it has to do with X-Men. Artwork kind of looks kind of weird. There's the Ice Master in here. That's what he claims himself to be. There's a snowman in a little jewelry box. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know what to expect. I guess that's Rogue. All right? So I don't know what to expect about this book. If you guys have any information about this one, yep, let me know. The Uncanny X-Men. This is issue one, Winter's End. This could be one that I might skip. I don't know. All right. Next, issue two of the Wonder Twins. Um... Rev Campbell says, is that the Iceman one-shot? I, I don't know. It just says the Uncanny X-Men. It says nothing about Iceman, but maybe it has to do with Iceman in there. I don't know. But uh, Wonder Twins issue two, uh, this comes out. Issue one was phenomenal. A lot of people loved it. I did read part of this issue already. And just by first hands look on it, I don't feel it was as strong so far as the first one. This has Beast Boy in it. Uh, the one thing I can say about this particular issue so far, um, it feel it felt like a little jumpy, a little disjointed, um, and I'm not sure if I like that. Uh, but I got to read the whole thing, and I might actually start over. Uh, you know, read it in a good frame of mind to try to think of you know, um, you know, maybe not too tired or in a bad mood or whatever the case may be. So, and I did read it. I was reading it digitally also. Sometimes when you read books digitally, you get a different feel for them. Um, but this is issue two of the Wonder Twins. Let's hope it turns out good and it's not cheesy. So we'll see what happens with it. Uh, thanks guys for watching. Right now I got 16 people. That's that's pretty good for a impulse live video, right? Um, two likes right now. If you guys again give this video a thumbs out if you guys really like it. Um, next. War of the Realms is coming in one month. Hey, just to let you know, it's coming out soon, and it's gonna cross over in pretty much all your Marvel books. But this one is X-23 as they're doing, they're, they're teaming up with this Assassin X type of character, okay? So, I don't know. It's been okay. It hasn't been great. But the Assassin X character is another clone. And it's like, how long are we going to deal with clones when it comes to the X-23 series? And can we come up with something different besides clones? Uh, man, what's your, what's your budget? You put my pull list to shame. Uh, love those X-23 covers. Um, listen, I am very fortunate that I can buy the books that I can buy. Collecting comics is pretty much the one thing that I, the only thing that I really, I guess, do. I like a lot of other things, but to spend money on, it's the comics. I, that's what I like. I like to play video games. I like to see movies. But where I spend my money is comics. Because I've been collecting comics pretty much my whole life. And it's funny because sometimes I don't always buy that many comics. In my opinion, I'll buy like 12 to 13 comics. 
And I have people that buy 20, 24 comics. I see people that put down their pull list on, on off of this video. And they have like 27 comics, 30 comics, trades. And I'm like, holy crap, you know? So I try to give myself a reasonable budget. Um, but I'm going to read what I like to read. And then as soon as I don't like it anymore, I'm going to drop it. Um, Tom 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 says, my shop opens in 10 minutes from Los Angeles. This video normally helps before I go in. So I'm perfect timing for you, Tom. I'm really happy. But going back to this X-23 book, the one that makes this book good is Gabby. She's the one that makes this series good for me. The other characters, I don't know. But we're going to see where this story goes and what is going to be the development of X-23 here. What's the long-term thing? I feel like Tamaki uh, is just kind of at a stall with it. Brev Campbell says, I remember at my shop, I have a dude holding like 25 books in his hand, maybe more. Uh, poor Mike says, that's cool, man. I didn't mean to pry. No, no, that's fine. I Listen, guys, if you want to find out information, I don't take any offense to it. You guys can ask anything you want, okay? Um, comics aren't available in India, so I, really, I read illegally online, and uh, I should otherwise... Should I otherwise do according to you? I don't just quite understand. Um, hey, you know what? I don't sit there and tell you to read comics online, but if the only way you can read them, you know, hey, that's that's the way you do. You can read digitally though online. You can purchase them online through Comicsology if you have that website available to you, and you can pay that way. Um, you know, or Marvel Universe. That's another good way to um, buy your comic books. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Marvel Universe is really good um, because you can pay like $60 for a whole year and you have a whole library of comics. Old ones, you get the new ones. Even though they're behind, you still get them. And at least this way you're not stealing. Yes, Marvel Unlimited. This way at least you're not stealing the books because when you steal them... It takes away from the creators, and that hurts the industry. So I don't really, I don't recommend it. I'm not obviously, I'm not your mom. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but you know, you you don't want to hurt these creators. They worked hard on this stuff. Okay, so um, definitely, there's avenues out there. Comicsology, Marvel Unlimited, uh, DC has a service as well. Um, there's many ways out there to affordable to read comics. Okay. Uh, Marvel Unlimited, yeah, it's available. I heard. Thanks for the suggestion. I completely agree with you. So thank you. I I really do. I mean, like I said, I'm not your mom. I can't tell you what to do, but I get my new books from eBay, so I have no comic shops near me. Yeah, I mean, there's different ways to get your comics. You know, eBay is a good way to get them as well. Um, there's also... There's a comic book site as well. What's it called? That sells trades for very cheap. You can get comics that way too. Uh, Sweet Exorcist, I got to be honest, Mike. I do legal digital to save myself from clutter. And you know what? I'm all for the digital stuff. You know, if you, if you purchase it and you want to collect it through that way, I agree with you. Comics takes up a lot of space. You know, I could be possibly moving soon, and I got to move like 32 comic book boxes. My only thing when it comes to comic books, I love having this physical book in my hand. I love reading the comics. I love seeing the pictures. I get so immersed in it. I capture the story more that way compared to digital comics, right? Reading it on a computer or in a tablet or on the phone, it's just not the same. Call me old school, but that's how I got, uh, grew up to them. In stock trades and discount comic book service. Correct, Slime. You are 100% correct, my friend. That's where I would recommend to get your comic books. You can get comics for a cheaper price if you sign up for a certain amount of titles and whatnot. And, and trades are like 50% cheaper. So you guys can go on there and purchase your trades there too. So that would be, that's pretty cool too. All right. Next, we talk about Superman issue 9, Liefeld. Um, let's see, we got, I believe reading physically is a better option. Um, phone, sometimes the eyes hurt. Yes, I agree with that. Doomsday Comics says, I don't like that Liefeld Superman cover. Uh, his face is too square, looks weird. Uh, go live more, Mike, it's great. And Lyric Magic Moment says, 
You can't beat having them in your hand and turn each page and enjoy the read. I agree 100%. Um, guys, yes, I would love to go live. It's so hard for me. My schedule is so up and down. And this is the only way I can go live is like on impulse. Like, oh, do I have a half hour to go live? Yeah, I'll do it. You know what I'm saying? And so it's no schedule. And I feel like my the viewing would be inconsistent. But, you know, maybe I might want to do the... Um, uh, maybe I want to, uh, might do the comic book call this way going forward too, because, uh, reason being is, I, I get a lot of people that watch the hall and like the hall and doomsday comics says 28 watching bro. I at 29 watching now and, and guys, you're all awesome. 29 people watching this video right now is sweet. And again, I really appreciate it. And I don't get a time, you know, a chance to say thank you enough for participating in all the videos that I do. And all that stuff. And Sweet Exorcist uh, gives me a super chat, so I really appreciate it. You know, $2 super chat, so thank you. And, uh, yeah, it means a lot, guys. So, Superman issue 9. You guys love the Liefeld cover. Come on, man. No, I don't like it either. Uh, they just stuck it in my box. <laughs> Maybe assuming I wanted the Liefeld cover. Um, but, yeah, it's too, like, flat. Look how square his torso is. And, and, and his face, and he's like, had this spiky hair, and I don't know, man. And the color doesn't pop. It's too flat. It's just not, not right for me. But Superman issue 9 has to do with the um, crime syndicate. I did read this book already. And um, personally, not a fan. I, it's just me. I don't like Bendis all that much when it comes to this. As you see, you seem like a family guy to me. Every time you come online, you're so polite and kind and friendly. Uh, again, I appreciate that. That really means a lot. Uh, because I feel like, guys, without you, my channel doesn't run. And I'm not breaking the internet. I don't have 10,000 subscribers. I don't have 8,000 subscribers. I have like 4,500 subscribers. You know, my videos get like 400, 500 views. But I appreciate every single one of you because again the channel doesn't exist without you and i try to get everybody involved as much as i can okay um because i want this community to grow and i want you guys to make friends amongst yourselves too but here's the crime syndicate okay so there's that um artworks looks cool but this issue was not that great for me um hey mike keep up the good work i do enjoy your videos thank you so much um yeah, so here's this. So it looks like you got Ultraman like manipulating John. And uh, yeah, I I did. I read this issue, guys. I wasn't a huge fan of it. Um, again, just me. Not a fan of Brian Michael Bendis stuff. All right. All right. Next. Red Hood Outlaw, issue 32. You guys reading it right now? Um, I am. It's dropped off since Jason shot Penguin in the face. But it looks like Penguin is back. So does he confront the Penguin in this issue? Um, does he uh, go back to Gotham, which maybe I think he does? Uh, I don't know. But do we get to see how Penguin recovered? Uh, Gomez Comic Collector says, yeah, I dropped it after issue three on that Superman. And Borderline Dam says, hi, Mike. I like your vids. Thank you so much. And Sweet Exorcist says, I dropped Red Hood a while ago. And then Ashu says, which one series is your favorite of late? For me, it's Venom, X-23, Friendly Neighborhood, Spidey. All three of those are really good. I like Venom the best, actually. But here's what goes on in Red Hood. The art in Red Hood was gorgeous, though. So, yeah, it was. I mean, it looks pretty cool. But I want to see what happened to Penguin. I want to see how he recovered. How did he get better? How is he up and around already? You know what I'm saying? Sitting there, um, what's it called? Uh, doing the thing that he does again. The dude got shot point blank in the face and the one arc later, he's back. It's just, it's ridiculous to me. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens in this issue of Red Hood and the Outlaws. I'm looking through this and uh, here's, a, here's a good picture of Red Hood there. What do you guys think of his costume change? Do you like it? Or did you like the old style better? All right. Next, I have three variant covers to show you. I have the first one is Supergirl issue 28. Uh, wind up getting the art germ variant. What do you guys think about that one? 
Um, you guys like Art Germs covers? I think this one is really a nice looking cover. Um, oh, Borderline Madman says Immortal Hulk is awesome. Agree with you 100%. One of my favorite Marvel comics right now. Um, yeah, so this is a really cool... I don't read this series. Anytime there's a Supergirl cover or Catwoman cover, I buy them. Uh, maybe Penguin got in the Lazarus pit like Jason. Could be. It's a possible theory. Um, but yeah, this is nice. Um, I don't know. Sometimes his smiles look maybe a little weird to me. But overall, body structure is nice. And a lot of his Supergirl characters are always in the sky, right? Uh, Gomez says, Art Germ is good. But man, he's everywhere right now. That is 100% right. Who's your favorite superhero? One each from DC and Marvel, by the way. Spider-Man. Green Lantern. Um, can't wait for the return of the Red She-Hulk. That's going to be a cool story when that comes back. Um, Goma says, smiles look like Joker, broski. <laughs> and Slime says, nope, not a fan of Art Germ. That's, that, I did not know that, Slime. I, I thought you were a fan. All right, next is Catwoman issue nine. So it's another cover this week. Um, I like this one, though, because she's like... A, I guess at the top of a of a room next to a art piece, and she's like side by side there. I guess between a wall or whatnot. Uh, crazy picture though there. I, I but I love I love it. I just love the way she looks. I love her facial expression uh, on there too. That one with no teeth, so that's good. Oh, and so it's Mark Brooks who does this one. Okay, thank you for clarifying on that one. Um, so yeah, I like this one too. Again. Don't read the series. Just collect the covers because those covers are really nice. And then last but not least, guys, um, here we go. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man and Hunted. Uh, this is the variant edition. I think this is 1 in 25, if I'm not mistaken. I've been a fan of Spidey since I was like 7 years old. I liked Dan, but he was sloppy at times. Do you think and how is the current writer doing in your uh, opinion all right i'll talk about that in a second the amazing spider-man hunted really excited about this book um again i showed you the original version of it but i got the variant copy this is craven the hunter's son so and then you have little spider-man right there so that was the variant um so going back to the question uh again is dan slot it was okay at times. I agree. It was sloppy. Not my favorite writer at all, though, when it comes to Spider-Man. I think Superior Spider-Man was a great idea. Uh, I think Spider-Island was a good series. Uh, but besides that, a lot of his stuff was wishy-washy for me. Um, I loved uh, David Michelini's run on Spider-Man back in the day. And I think Nick Spencer is bringing Spider-Man back to the way that people liked Spider-Man. Uh, I, I personally do think so. Um, man, now I'm going to take a rinse and head to my local comic book shop because of this live feed. LOL. Thanks for sharing. Uh, I appreciate it. Thanks, Gomez. And Sweet Exorcist says, hey, Mike, have you seen Captain Marvel yet? And if so, your spoiler-free thoughts. Okay. Um, that Spider-Man thought, though, Nick Spencer's doing a great job. And I think he's bringing back Spider-Man the way it should be brought back. The way he brought back Felicia in that last issue was awesome. Captain Marvel, haven't seen it yet. Because um, I can't just go by myself. I have to see it with my kids and my wife. They do want to see it. So I have to wait until all our schedules combine. And I got to go see it with them. So I think that's that's the key thing there. Uh, but I do want to see it. I've seen some reviews. I've seen some mixed things. I'm going into it with open eyes, just like I do with my comic books. And I got to look at it as an origin movie. I can't look at it as Captain Marvel, how she is right now. Okay. So that's the way I got to look at um, Captain Marvel there. But I can't wait to see it. So, again, I've heard people saying they didn't like it. And I see people that did like it. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, and then Slime says, I hope you enjoy the movie. Well, thank you very much. I hope that I will like the movie. I'm sure I will. I like every movie. Because I don't go to the movies enough. So when I go to the movies, it's like, dude, it's like a visual treat for me. I'm like, yes, I'm at the movies. I get this big screen, you know, stuff like that. So it's cool. And uh, hey, buddy, don't believe the mixed reviews. Frankly speaking, the non-haters or neutral fans in the general loved it. That's true. They probably liked it, you know. So um, 
So there you have it, guys. There's the haul for the week. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this live version. If you want me to do this live every week, um, let me know. And uh, I'll definitely consider it. Um, Lyric says, same here. Hoping to see Captain Marvel this week with the kids. Looking forward to it. Uh, but yeah, if you want to see this live every week, you know, just let, it, let, let me know in the comments below, guys. And I'll try to do it live as much as I can. It's, it's great um, talking with you guys because I don't get a chance to do it all that much. And, um, and uh, yeah, so it's great stuff. Yeah, and Sweet says, yes, please, every week. And uh, yeah, you should do it every week says doomsday comics okay so i'm definitely going to consider it and see what the others say out there it saves me some time from editing i can tell you that much just have to make a, a thumbnail uh keep it live then just look for this then every week guys um you know around this time probably maybe a little earlier maybe like 12 o'clock 11 30 12 30 something like that this is late for me Brilliant live stream, Mike. Great to interact with you. I appreciate it. Legend says, I would love to see it live. And Doomsday says, but uh, more, <laughs> more next time. Next time I'll buy 45 comics so you guys can go through it, right? Uh, Ashu says, are you reading No Surrender? How do you think it's going? Uh, no Surrender. Um, are you talking about Avengers No Surrender? Or is it No Road Home, the one that I showed you? originally because avengers no surrender was a phenomenal read by the way yeah the avengers one yeah i showed it in the hall it was really great it was awesome no road home is fantastic and if you did not read no surrender go out and buy that one that was a great read it was phenomenal all right and uh yeah no road home i'm sorry so uh yeah guys so i'm gonna call for the day because i have to go pick up the the kiddos at school right now and then I have to go back and teach some war tennis and um, guys this week when you look for my videos there might not be a most anticipated list this week um, just because I had a huge appointment yesterday and I couldn't pre-record that video so uh, but look for a top five uh, of the week on Friday okay so again guys thank you so much for watching and until that next comic book review you guys put your comments on what you picked up this week and uh, looking forward to seeing all your thoughts and comments down below so again guys thank you so much and uh, I really appreciate you guys comments take care everyone see you soon peace